All right, another new house introduction on the channel today. And we're talking about Toba, Toba Parfums, all the way from Hong Kong. So we've got six fragrances I'm gonna to talk to you about from this indie niche perfume house from Hong Kong. If you wanna find out about these fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in, it's Sebastian. We're talking about Toba Parfums. Are you familiar with this house? Do let me know, put a comment down below so I can find out how familiar you are with Toba and how unfamiliar you are with this house. They are from Hong Kong. I got to meet them at three different shows already. I met them at Pitti Fragranza in Florence last year, earlier this year at Exons in Milan, and then also again at uh, Petit Fragranza in Florence uh, earlier, the, well, in September as well. So I'm reviewing all six fragrances for you guys today. They launched last year, and I think you're going to enjoy these. If you like indie niche fragrances, then I think this is definitely a house you should look into. And at the time of this uh, airing of this video, if you go to their website and buy any of their fragrances that come in bottles like this, a 50 ml or a 100 ml, you will get a discovery set of all of the fragrances as as a free gift. So that's happening now. So let me know again if you've discovered this house, if you've sampled any of their fragrances, do put a comment down below so I can find out. And last but not least, I do love, you know, sharing new houses to you guys. I think you guys enjoy the uh, the new house discovery videos. And please let me know, put a comment down which new house you discovered on this channel that you really have enjoyed discovering. Like you've actually sampled their fragrances and ended up buying bottles. Please put a comment down below so I can find out. So I'm going to talk about the fragrances in alphabetical order. And also as I was sampling and wearing these fragrances, I did write down sentences that I'm gonna read as well, but I'm gonna talk to you about them to you and then also smell on camera as well. So the first fragrance we're gonna talk about is Force. This one right here, we've got it in 50 ml bottle here. And Force, they call it a mysterious incense green. And the first thing I thought to myself when I smelled this fragrance, I thought this smells like something from the house of Aesop or Aesop fragrances. Are you guys familiar with that house? They are a skincare line from Australia, currently owned by L'Oreal. And if you've ever sampled their fragrances, you're probably gonna think this is kind of one of their fragrances perhaps, who knows. But Forest features notes of cypress, spearmint, licorice, cocoa absolute, myrrh, fir balsam, patchouli, and suede. They did mention mysterious incense green as a description or descriptor for this fragrance. I agree, it's definitely that. I also get green forest-like qualities here and not much warmth, so I'm thinking a cold winter and walking through this forest. It's mysterious, of course, it could be dark. There's a bit of smoke out there. Maybe there's a church nearby. You're getting all those, you know, green notes from the forest trees and vegetation that's out there. And then of course, there's some light warmth in there. The cocoa absolute comes in. The fur is something that I really enjoy reminding me of you know, walking through these really cold forests with fir trees and things like that. But there's some light warmth that comes in with the myrrh. Myrrh is a kind of a sweet resin that comes in and, you know, creates a little bit of a smoky warmth in this mostly kind of aromatic green woody fragrance. The licorice is a very interesting addition to this. It does sweeten up the fragrance as well. And then finally, there's some light leathery suede touches as well when the fragrance is drying down. But for me, when I first put my nose on it. It reminded me of a fragrance from the house of Aesop or Aesop, maybe also going towards something like Comme des Garçons and their incense line. Maybe they're, they have a, a fragrance called Hinoki, kind of going into that direction of woody, aromatic, green, incense kind of fragrances. So I feel like these, uh, this particular fragrance, Force, is totally that kind of an inspiration. What I wrote down as notes for this, I get woods and aromatics with spices and smoke. I also get earth and wood shavings with a leather glove of a carpenter sawing wood next to a green forest. There's light hints of booze as well. I'm getting some booziness, probably coming from the licorice. There's a eucalyptus menthol vibe in it as well. That gives it a nice edge to the fragrance. So let's go ahead and smell this. Those were my notes when I was testing this fragrance out. Let me know if you've gotten your nose on Force. Let me know if you've been, if you've been wanting to put your nose on the fragrances of Toba. Yeah, there's also 
lots of woods here, right? And also a church-like woods experience. The incense-like notes comes in, and it's 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 myrrh, they say, but I also get something like frankincense in here. So there's probably frankincense thrown in the notes as well. Because myrrh for me is more sweeter resin and smoky. Perhaps this is that, but I'm getting a major dose of frankincense with this. And I think this is the reason why it goes into the Comme des Garçons direction or maybe into the Aesop fragrances direction. But also kind of antique woods as well. But a really great fragrance. This is really lovely. It's cold. It's a very cold fragrance. Not too much warmth in here. But remember the gloves, the, the, the carpenter's gloves. There's definitely... On skin, I got the leather gloves in here. So kind of painted a picture, but a wonderful offering. If you like these kind of aromatic green, woody forest, fir tree kind of smoky fragrances, definitely check out Force. All right, next fragrance we're gonna talk about is Indolence, this one right here. So Indolence is a fragrance that's characterized as sexy, woody, musky. I recently recently spoke about this one in a video because I like this one a lot. It's one of my favorites from this house because it has a pretty prominent note of patchouli and I love patchouli as you guys already know. And they call this sexy, woody, musky. I do get that. It's bergamot, caraway, soft flowers, mate absolute, patchouli, ambroxan, and cashmiran. Musky for sure, the cashmiran and ambroxan creates this. Mate Absolute gives it that kind of green grassiness as well. A sort of like a tea vibe in here. Creates a bit of a coziness, but definitely on the grassy side because whenever I smell mate versus like black tea or green tea, I do get that kind of grassy edge with mate. But lots of patchouli here. And then I think the caraway is providing us that sweaty, sexy, musky kind of characteristic here as well, along with w the soft flowers and things like that. This to me on skin is really, really sexy. I agree with them and definitely very, very earthy, woody as well. And then, you know, musky for sure definitely comes in from all the musky notes, uh, like the molecular notes like ambroxan and cashmere in, but really a job well done. What I wrote about this one is green, spicy, musky patchouli with hay-like qualities. There's definitely dryness here. It acts dry, but on skin it does get more syrupy and wet rather than fully dry and um, dusty. Quite dry, but some of the tea's smoothness, which is the, the mate, does creep in to balance it out. But the patchouli is fantastic here, and the spices and citruses really freshen up the fragrance nicely. Might be lightly hinting at something like the now discontinued Dries Van Noten by Frederick Mall, but just a light hint. I have no idea why I'm getting that with this fragrance, but I got that. But they are so different uh, fragrances uh, when you connect them together. But I got some hints of something like the Dries Van Noten from Frederick Mall. But this is a wonderful offering, a great fragrance from this house, probably my favorite. But there's a few others that I really enjoy as well. But the Indolence is definitely tops for me from the house of Toba. Let me know if you've sampled Toba uh, fragrances indolence and let me know what you think about this fragrance. Put a comment down below so I can find out. All right, next fragrance we're talking about is Ombre Verte. This one right here seems like there's a bit of greenness with the two fragrances, last two fragrances, and also a little bit on the first fragrance as well with Force. But this one's Vegetal Elegant Floral is what they say for this one. Once again, it has notes of cypress and this also has moss, vetiver, tuberose, mimosa, cedarwood, and cashmiran. Really, really great fragrance once again. I think this one and also Indolence are definitely my top two favorite fragrances with one more and I'll let you know which one that is. But this one definitely has that vegetal greenness that I enjoy in fragrances, plus lots of balance with floral notes. The tuberose and mimosa are pretty, pretty prominent here but kind of acts grassy as well. And I think it's the vetiver note that comes in that gives me this kind of dry grassiness. Vetiver does have a tendency to do that. If you've ever actually smelled the real vetiver grassiness, it's dry kind of. There's this kind of interesting woody grassy characteristic about it that's in the smell and it's captured here. So it's a nice balance of masculine notes, I think, and also kind of more on the feminine side of notes like vetiver, I'm sorry, tuberose and mimosa. So it's a really beautiful, gorgeous wear. What I wrote down for this one is earthy grassy woods with aromatic greens and spices. Bright, zingy, spicy, floral with short-lived citruses. Because for me, the citruses do start 
on scan and then they do disappear and everything else takes over. So a really wonderful offering. Let's go ahead and quickly smell this one. Definitely the vetiver is there. And then I think the vetiver seems to be the strongest note here. So it does appear really fast, but once it's in the development stages and you're getting into the heart section of the fragrances um, of the fragrance, you'll start noticing the mimosa and tuberose. So the combination of white floral, a, a yellow floral, yellow floral, a little bit almondy from the mimosa, very powdery here, but a great, great balance, really wonderful offering. So Ombre Verte, really great fragrance from Toba. Let me know if you've sampled that one. Uh, quite a nice offering. And definitely these are, the way they're done, they're a bit more artistic rather than conventional. So if you like the idea of really focusing on indie niche rather than mass market niche, then definitely you must get your nose on Toba Parfums. Remember, we're doing this in alphabetical order. So the next fragrance is Rose on the Shore. This one right here. So if you like Rose, Get your nose on this one. This is a very interesting rose. I'll read to you what I got when I was wearing this one. But it has, well, they call this a green airy rose. And it has notes of pink pepper, moss, Egyptian geranium, rose water essence, rose de mai absolute, patchouli vetiver. Those are the notes that come in for this one. Definitely on the jammy side, plus dry at the same time. So they've captured the jamminess, the juiciness of the rose. But the fragrance kind of wears dry. And the fact that they've also included Egyptian geranium or ger geranium in general, it accentuates the kind of rosiness, makes it more intense, and gives it a bit more mintiness and also a greenness to the rosiness of the fragrance to give you a bit more aromatic touch to the fragrance. It's quite nice. What I wrote uh, down for this, it's, I said dry, stemmy, green rose that develops to a jammier rose, but a very fresh. There's a saltiness here I wrote, but not marine saltiness, more like salt from tears. So if you've ever gotten your tears in your mouth uh, or tasted your tears, there's that kind of strange saltiness, which I get from this fragrance. So there's a saltiness for sure, but not necessarily marine like fish and uh, sea and things like that. I also wrote, the aromatics of the geranium play so perfectly with the rose and makes the rose more masculine. So yeah, there's definitely a masculine edge about this one. And the fact that the patchouli and vetiver are here to create a more more masculine take on a rose. But this is not a sunny, uplifting rose, but more of a rose for someone that's been sad and crying to brighten up their day. That's what I got from this fragrance. So let's quickly smell this one and tell you about it a little bit further. Yeah, definitely a salty rose, really big rose, lots of rose here, a juicy jammy, but surrounded by dryness. And again, the geranium is here to give you more of that kind of minty rosiness and greenness that uh, you know you want to add to a rose fragrance to give it a little more of a green, uh, you know, stemmy quality. There might there might be a hint of something like Rose and Queer from the House of Frederick Ma, but this one is definitely much rosier than that. Whereas F uh, Rose and Queer from Frederick Ma is more geranium going into the rose direction. There's no rose. It's just uh, the, the the way the fragrance is created, they took out the rosiness of the geranium. Here, there's rose and geranium, so it is rosier, but once again, uh, definitely a masculine rose. So, really quality offering from Toba. I mean, I'm impressed with the quality of the fragrances here, and it does take some time to really dig into them to really learn about these fragrances and then to come up your with your own thoughts and things like that. But this is Rose on the Shore from the House of Toba. So next up, we've got a fragrance called Serendipity, this one right here. And Toba calls this a woody leather ambery. And this is typically of my favorite styles. Unfortunately, this one was not one of my favorites from the collection. I feel like the collection is a lot more solid than this particular fragrance, or maybe I'm just bored of this particular style. But there's nutmeg here, saffron, sandalwood, patchouli, amber, tonka beans. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad fragrance. When I started testing it, I enjoyed it, but then I was like, you know what, the other fragrances are a little more, and I enjoy these other fragrances more. But it does become very powdery and warm spicy here. There's a little bit of saltiness that comes in here as well. I don't know. There's salty edge with some of the fragrances here. It's vanillic, and then also there's marine touches, metallic touches. So it's a very interesting combination of uh, notes in a fragrance. 
to eventually also create like this balsamic ambery touch with leather. So what I wrote about this soft, creamy, powdery, woody sandalwood with musk and saltiness. Add warm spices and saffron that gives you a warm, lightly leathery edge. Rose appears a bit. There's something rosy in here that appears a bit, but it's not necessarily very rosy. And also vanilla appears a bit as well. Again, to give this an original creation with some sweetness. Really enjoy this. I enjoy this one, but like I said, next to the others, I enjoy the others more. And again, it's a sandalwood fragrance. So if you're into the idea of sandalwood, definitely check this one out. In the end, it's gonna be ambery and leathery at the same time as sandalwood woody. So this is Serendipity. So the last fragrance from this house, from the house of Toba Parfums, or just Toba, is Tendresse de Autumn, this one right here. So this is considered by the house sensual, soapy, modern. Well, I do agree it's a modern take on a classic style fragrance. At least that's what I got from it. The notes are violet leaves, iris root, rose, magnolia, aldehydes, sandalwood, and musk. For me, the first thing I got from this was a reminder of Metallique from the house of Tom Ford. It's very aldehydic here, and there, there's a little bit of... Uh, soft, creamy, almost vanillic touch in here. And perhaps it's the combination of the aldehydes and the sandalwood. Sandalwood sometimes gives you that kind of vanillic creaminess without even having any vanilla in it. So maybe that's what's reminding me of uh, Metallique. And by the way, Metallique has now been discontinued. So if you're in the market for it, get it because you're probably not gonna be able to find it although you'll be able to get this to remind you of Metallique as well. So what I wrote about this is, this is a fizzy, soapy, aldehydic fragrance that could come off a bit classic and feminine, but very powdery and once again, very quality. There are flowers here like rose and ylang ylang, but also a freshness with the aldehydes and violet leaves. Yes, there's definitely ozonic touches here with violet leaves. You do experience them. There's a watery edge running throughout it. Although it's not like really intense, I wouldn't call this a only watery ozonic fragrance, but it's there, it's running throughout the fragrance. But then I also wrote, but overdosed with powderiness. It's very, very powdery and it's really engaging. It does hint at metallic a bit by Tom Ford, but without the metallic touch. It does not have that metallic touch that Tom Ford's metallic has. I did write, love this. So this is definitely one of my really, uh, you know, loves of this house and uh, I, I enjoyed what I smelled here. Not only because it reminds me of metallic, it's just that that aldehydes note is really, really awesome in this. And uh, I do enjoy aldehydes. And the aldehydes is probably what's going to kind of connect you with something being classic. I think the first thing you might think of is Chanel number no. five. This does not smell like Chanel number no. five to me, but the aldehydes in, in this does remind me of aldehydes in other fragrances. But it's a really, really great fragrance. This one's done really, really well. So I would say my three real favorite fragrances from this house, are these three. We've got Indolence, Ombre Verte, Tendresse de Autumn. But you know, I have to be honest, they're all really, really great. Even Serendipity is great. I enjoyed it when I first smelled it, but next to the others, I enjoy the other ones a little more. Rose on the Shore is also really, really great. I think the fragrances have been done very quality. And Force, like I said, Force reminds me of something like a cross between a Comme des Garçons or a, a Aesop fragrance because they do these kind of cypressy, wintry kind of forest-like fragrances with incense and things like that. So the, 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 the fragrances are definitely quality. So either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video on Toba Parfums. Do let me know if you've discovered this house. Let me know, put a comment down below so I can find out. And if you haven't and you've been wanting to hear about them, this is the video for you. You can always come back to it. This is the first six fragrances from the House of Toba. And don't forget, if you buy a full bottle at 50 ml or 100 ml, they are giving you a discovery set of all of the fragrances. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.